So I received an email from someone from Hyundai saying, I'm too critical on mainstream automakers. Is that true? Well, you know what? Honda sucks. They just made, well, they just had a stinker. They just made a big stink. Seriously, they just took an enormous dump on the street. That was their year. That was 2022. The thing is, it was actually worse than it sounds. Why was it worse than it sounds? Well, because they produced significantly more cars than they sold. So they're trying to claim, uh, no, 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 no. It's just because we can't produce enough cars. But the truth was, that is a complete lie. They produced plenty of cars. They have plenty of cars sitting in, I don't know where they sit, in fields where they collect dust where Honda probably pays rent to sit them there. That's the truth for 2022. Doesn't matter how you sugarcoat it. It doesn't matter if you love the brand. You've got to you've got to tell the truth. That's what I do. Now, Honda just made a monumentally bad decision when we all thought that they'd woken up and realized they were heading down the wrong path. Unfortunately, my friends, they most certainly have not. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers, great to have you. Welcome back everyone else. Hey, thank you so much for supporting me and supporting uh, my wife, Shanna, who's at the moment had a diagnosis here of stage four incurable cancer. We found some clinicians overseas who don't agree with that diagnosis. They said, mm, we think they got it wrong and we think that we can cure you. We think that there's a chance that you will live past Christmas so basically that clinic though, I mean, there's probably a good incentive for them to say that. They charge $11,000 a week. It's a lot of money, but there are actually other people who have been to that clinic and have been in a similar situation, same diagnosis, and they have been able to, well, they have been able to drastically improve their situation and in some cases actually be cured. So you guys have donated to my GoFundMe and I just want to say an enormous thank you because because it's eleven thousand dollars a week, I was going to have to sell my house. Probably still going to do that actually, but it now means that I can afford way more treatment. And the more treatment I can afford, the better chance of success. Basically, the more weeks she's at that clinic, going through all the different therapies that they do, which many of you have actually sent to me, emailed to me. Hey, see this? Hey, check out that technology. Hey, check out this new. Guess what? The awesome thing is, this place does most of those things in the one place. It's amazing. So thank you so much. You've actually made this possible. So, you know what? If you've had an average week, an average day, I'm telling you right now, what you've done has made an enormous difference to my life. Thank you. Honda, in the United States, which is by far their biggest market worldwide, sales went down 33% last year. Well, actually, Honda says people are being racist towards them. Seriously, they actually said that. They said that in China, the reason they're not selling enough cars is because people are racist against the Japanese at the moment. Now, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I have been to China a fair bit. I lived in Taiwan, which is China. No, no, just joking. Don't worry, guys, in Taiwan. Not really. Sort of. Sort of is. The Chinese think it is, right? Yeah. Anyway, I lived in Taiwan for a long time, and I think people there love the Japanese. They thought they were awesome. They really did. They kind of idolized them to some degree. I don't think the Chinese are racist against Japanese products whatsoever. I think they just recognize the fact that they're making better cars than Honda is. And Honda is investing their money in the wrong places. P case in point, they went down the hydrogen path, right? It didn't work, right? They made the Honda Clarity. No one wanted the damn thing. So what happened? They discontinued it because no one was buying it. But it turns out, secretly, they were developing a new fuel cell power vehicle. And the reason they're saying now is because, well, you know what? We've been able to discover a magical way to make it much cheaper. Does it mean that that's a good idea still? Does it mean people will buy it? Well, it turns out Honda isn't actually even convinced that people will buy it. Honda say they would use a new hydrogen fuel cell system jointly developed with General Motors in a US built CRV crossover. So it turns out General Motors have been lying to us as well. They're not fully in on EVs either. I mean, who knew? This is surprising to me. Maybe some of you guys in the United States knew about this. How did I not know about this? Anyhow, the fuel cell CRV will be built in Ohio and will launch in the US and Japan by the end of next year. Europe sales are still under consideration. Honda said in a statement, it's yet to be known whether or not anyone in Europe will even buy one of these things, but anyhow, 
Honda executives said engineers have cut the cost of the next generation system to one third that of the system used in Honda's previous fuel cell car, the Clarity sedan that debuted in 2016. I mean, one third the cost of the system, that's not the car. And no one knows what they mean by one third the cost of the system. Does that mean certain parts of the system? Does that mean the entire drivetrain? No idea. I'm, I'm very much skeptical being able to reduce the cost by say 50% of the car, which is what they seem to be suggesting. Among other improvements, they say the durability of the system will be doubled and the low temperature performance will be boosted. So durability of the system will be doubled. That's, that's quite an impressive result if they can do that. Does that mean you should consider getting one? Well, absolutely not. I mean, seriously, this is a technology that is never, ever going to take off for cars. Maybe trucks, maybe. I don't think it will for trucks either, but it's possible. For passenger vehicles, no, you'd have to be crazy. Where are you going to charge the thing? Seriously, I mean, it's ridiculous. I honestly think most hydrogen stations that have been installed worldwide will end up shutting down or being blown up like that one that blew up in Norway. By the way, the one that blew up in Norway, everyone who knows what happened died. There was like 12 people there. They're the only ones who know what happened and they're all dead. So we don't know how it blew up. That's seriously what investigators said. Since this system anyway starts up significantly faster at temperatures as low as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 30 degrees centigrade, because there's a lot of people who live in the world who are living in minus 30 degrees temperatures. The new technology is an outgrowth of a joint development between Honda and GM dating back to 2013. In other words, they've been working on this fuel technology, this fuel cell technology for this specific model now for 10 years. Wow. Honda and GM have been pooling resources on hydrogen fuel cell development to defray the high costs of the technology, which is seen as a critical stepping stone toward carbon neutrality goals, according to the companies. I mean, yeah, I don't think it is at all. In terms of passenger cars, I think it plays no part at all. But anyway, let me know your, your thoughts are in the comments. Honda is the world's largest manufacturer of internal combustion engines right now, according to them. Don't know how they get the information. Maybe they're including like um, chainsaws and mowers and, you know, all those kinds of farmyard or residential home equipment. However, they intend to phase out gasoline power by 2040 and sell only electric vehicles or fuel cell vehicles by then, 2040. So they think that the market's going to wait 17 years for them to phase out gasoline products. I'm sorry, Honda. The market's moving a lot faster than that. Hydrogen will play a particularly important role in achieving carbon neutrality. Senior Managing Executive Officer Shinji Ayoma said at Honda's headquarters Thursday, with this system, we've been striving for lower costs, high durability, and improved low temperature resistance. From the mid-2020s, Honda said it aims to begin external sales of fuel cell systems at the level of 2,000 units a year. 2,000 units a year. So they spent... Well, by the time this comes out, 11 years of development, plus the previous hydrogen fuel cell development they did on the Clarity, so more than 11 years of development to sell 2,000 a year. How is that economically viable? For that to be economically viable, they'd have to be selling them for about $5 million each. I mean, seriously, there's supercar manufacturers that are selling more vehicles than that and haven't developed and haven't been working on the same car for 11 years. Anyhow, they say that this new generation hydrogen system will have further improvements over the setup arriving in the CRV next year. So they're going to have a new model of this car after 2024, which, which will be, I don't know, magically so much better that people might actually want to buy one. Although I doubt it. Honda aims to halve the cost of the fuel cell system by 2030, they said. But hang on a minute, I thought you said you cut it down by one third. So maybe they're saying, Cut the cost down to one third of what it is today, then halve that cost again. So you're looking at like a, what, an 85% cost reduction. That would be pretty incredible compared with the technology coming next year. And again, double the durability in that time frame as well. By 2030, Honda expects fuel cell technology to gain wide acceptance. That's funny. Driving deliveries to 60,000 units a year. <laughs> okay. Honda's saying the definition of wide acceptance is 60,000 vehicles a year. This is a company making traditionally four to five million cars a year. 60,000 is peanuts. 
I don't understand how the bean counters can mathematically decide that this makes sense. Anyhow, they say that by the late 2030s, annual sales should hit hundreds of thousands of units. Hundreds of thousands by the late 2030s. So they're saying in, say, 15 years' time, they're going to be selling hundreds of thousands. Okay. Those shipments will include fuel cell systems for medium and large-sized vehicles. So in other words, they're going to make a number of different models. This is GM as well, by the way, guys. GM and Honda think they're going to make a number of different models in the market and people will buy them. Now, the thing is, is there plans for people to go and build hydrogen fuel cell stations around the world? I mean, you know, there's a couple in California, right? But outside of that, there's barely any in the United States. Uh, is there plans for systems? Well, I Google this. I found very little results. There's some, there's a couple here and there, but I don't know how that means that hundreds of thousands of people will want to buy them. I don't. I mean, even in South Korea, where there's a fair few of them, a lot of people are saying that they sold their hydrogen powered car because it was simply uneconomically viable. Well, basically it was such an inconvenience to them in terms of fueling the thing. Crucially, Honda plans to expand sales to commercial vehicles as well, construction equipment, and even to companies using fuel cells as station power plants. Power plants, right. Honda sees particular promise in using hydrogen fuel cells as backup power stations for, for cloud computing data centers. Now, the thing is, you got to remember, the cost of hydrogen batteries, that's what they're basically saying, has to, it's going to have to fall by tremendous amounts to be able to compete with the new sodium iron energy storage we're going to be seeing, which will be mainstream by 2030, 2035. It's going to be incredibly cheap. Compared to today, I'd say battery technology will, will I'd say batteries will cost around 80% less compared to today in 2030. So that means Honda would have to be unbelievably genius to be able to reduce the cost of their competing hydrogen batteries that they're saying they're going to have as well in order to, well, make them economically viable. I just don't see that happening. I think it's highly, highly unlikely. The hydrogen-powered CRV will be assembled at Honda's Performance Manufacturing Center in Maryville, Ohio, where the NSX supercar was built. The CRV will accept home charging of its electric battery as well as hydrogen refueling. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but that's interesting. Now, we don't know what model this is coming out in a GM car. I'm assuming GM will have some particular name for their model. And clearly, GM think that hydrogen is going to work as well. So clearly, GM has been pulling our fingers a little bit, right? Yeah, pull my finger, see what happens. Nothing good. Yeah, clearly, the GM have been saying, we're all in on EVs. They just go and spend a billion dollars on a gasoline V8 plant to improve efficiency by 1% or something like that. And then it turns out, They've been secretly investing, who knows how many hundreds of millions into a car that they might sell 2,000 a year of. Um, Mary Barra, you did it again. Thanks for watching.